Today, I'm joined by Ben Askins, owner and managing director of Verb Brands. Verb Brands is a digital agency that specializes in working for the luxury and premium sector. Based in London and Shanghai, Verb works with some of the biggest brands such as Mr. Porter, Bugatti, and many more. He's also been recognized by Forbes as being one of the ones to watch for their 30 under 30 program for marketing. This is a bit of a fun fact. He also happens to be working alongside Chris Donnelly, who was recently featured on the Daily Mail and also the Lad Bible for potentially being Britain's best boss for giving his team the day off so that they could enjoy themselves for the first day to end the lockdown. The purpose of this talk was you had to fire a client and do you mind if I get this the exact LinkedIn post up here just because it kind of gives the viewers a bit of context. As business owners, especially agency owners, we've all had this kind of fair share of just asshole clients. You're dealing with, I guess, very, very demanding brands. Could you tell us a bit more about what exactly happened when you had to, when you wrote this up on LinkedIn? You, you start posting these things, you never quite know how to do. And for whatever reason, that one really took off a lot of huge banner. And I think the honest truth why it took off was because it, we've all been there. Mm. We all, any business owner could at any point in the time, anyone could name in any business who the trouble clients are. Mm. And what I mean by that, it's always one of the bigger clients. It's always hugely profit big from a revenue perspective. But when you drill into the numbers around you like through you and R or the profit levels of that account or how many hours are actually having to go into it alongside the damages doing to the team and demoralizing the team, and everything like that, it, it's always a negative output. And so one of the hardest things you can do as a business owner, because it, you know, it's revenue and after mm. COVID, everyone's struggling. It's not an easy position. I, and I truly get that. It's not an easy position to be, say, we're going to can of one of our biggest billers or one of our top clients. I fundamentally believe that there's no scenario where those clients are actually beneficial for the business in any, across any metric, from a staff perspective, from a revenue perspective, from a profit perspective, from a sort of overall morale perspective. It, it truly won't make a difference. I mean, I think for a company like your size, for you to potentially walk away from a big biller did you also have to think about the risks involved did you have the accountant on the line to say hey hey buddy what's going to happen how did that kind of conversation happen so for this one it was just a, a pure decision based on how they were talking to the team hmm. it just got to the stage where it was just too much we had some of our best people working on this account and it, and it was just fundamentally making their weeks shit and what I mean by it is in any job there's parts that are a bit boring that you can't you don't necessarily want to do and that that's a part of working life but I think people are what make something whether you enjoy your job or not and that's internal so you're the staff and the team that you work alongside and it's the mm -hmm. people you interact with and if there's people who genuinely make you miserable like what's the point like just mm -hmm. what's the point of working with people like that because it just mm -hmm. in the long run there's no scenario where I will be sitting here in six months and say oh I wish we hadn't fired that you know I think one of the comments and th there's a few comments like that underneath it, of this post I think people absolutely nailed it is the the only regret people have when they do this is they didn't do it sooner. And I think mm. that's quite a poignant, poignant point. I mean, going away from this, you know, practically, you know what, when we fired our client, we, I actually, uh, this is right towards Christmas, sort of January, and I couldn't really talk to my mentor or any of the other agency people because they're all on holiday. And I literally Googled, hey, how do you fire a client? And the advice that gave me was, and I hope you will add to this is it just basically said speak with your client be very clear about what you want and what that the fact that you want to end a relationship uh, or that contract essentially and also if you do want to maintain that kind of bridge then leave them with a exit to say okay here are other ways that you can work with other companies or how, did you actually have that kind of plan to say what you should do next the contract that you have for your client it works both ways there are notice periods both sides of the table we didn't stop work overnight we mm. served the notice and we made an agreement we say look we'll manage your client for the remainder of the month and then we'll hand it over to your next chosen provider and who that might be mm. but people often forget you you fundamentally have the right to not work with people like you're mm. not when you lock yourself into the contract yes there's a notice period because i think that's right and i think it's good that you kind of provide both sides of the table give that option to transition over but you absolutely have the right to stop working with people and people have mm. this weird thing they get locked in and they think oh i can't i can't and so you you don't if you're not enjoying it if it's not working for your business if it's not profitable if the team are miserable stop working with it and it's just mm. an email it's a formal email where you say dear x whoever that person is please consider this our written notice we will and here's the exit panel which we will support you and yes of course there's a relationship there you want to make sure it's cordial so it's good to have that chat initially but 
the second you hand in that that letter that written notice that is formally ending the contract and and people yeah. really do forget that that's an option you don't have yeah. to work with people that make you miserable yeah. you truly don't and it it, it never and i go back to the earlier point it never benefits the business in any scenario yeah. beyond potentially turnover and turnover isn't isn't the priority figure profit levels retention levels results for your clients satisfaction with your staff those are the metrics which a good business is built upon turnover is an absolute arbitrary figure because it tells you very little about the actual business well wow. ben maybe you have shown reasons why you should be voted britain's best you guys really care about what your team is doing and how you want to grow in a sustainable fashion and that's so so respectful from anyone from any industry really in terms of a small business going through this exact same issue any top tips or advice on how to move on after this i think it's really i think it always happens i think my advice would be to audit do a personal audit on your clients quite regularly because mm. the clients change don't they new teams come in new people mm. you know new ownership comes in it's really hard to say client that you could have a great relationship with 18 months ago could change quite quickly if someone leaves or some core main contact sort of transitions mm. across i think to any business owners, I would just be really brutally honest because you, you know who your bad clients are. You truly mm. do. And I think you also know if we, and again, this is just speaking from personal experience because I've learned this the hard way. This has come off the back of three or four clients, which I should have done a long, long time ago. And you've learned the hard way. Mm. I think you, you know when it's a bad client, you, mm. you truly do. And you know when it's really draining the team. And you know, people complain like that, that's kind of part of life and it's quite right that they do. And sometimes an account gets a bit annoying or there's quite a tight deadline. That's very different to what we're talking here. We're talking about truly toxic work environment that's yeah. genuinely damaging your team. And that's very different. And people do fundamentally know the difference. Like, mm. yes, you get the odd stressful deadline where something just has to be done by a certain point and that can add a little bit of stress, but mm. a good team should be able to kind of cope with that. I'm talking about people that truly make people hate coming to work and making yeah. their lives miserable. And you know when that's happening. So I, I, I would just say to any owner, just be really honest with yourself around your clients mm. and then use that time. To, one, you never underestimate the morale boost your team will get to get mm. rid of that. It's like a breath of fresh air. And then use that time to focus on different areas, like start with your existing customer base, use that extra time to come up with new proactive ideas that might help replace the revenue through your existing base. Mm. And then just go through your tested marketing channels and increase the pipeline that way. Those clients are always out there for you. Brilliant. One last thing, were there any red flags that you could have detected that you could have thought, oh, this is interesting. We need to kind of watch out for this. Yes. I, th I think the big one is around how much time they give you. And what I mean by that is people often join, there's often stuff urgent on, and that's fine. If people want you to hit the ground running and that's great. And we're always keen to work with that. I think if you agree a strategy or agree a direction and with them within a day or a day or two, suddenly something happens that they want to immediately change the direction, not give you time. Mm. You're never going to get the results you want because it's ultimately it's yours. We're based on our digital strategy. We're meant to be the experts there. If we are allowing ourselves to be railroaded by a client on a daily basis, which can constantly change the direction of what we're doing, that's always a danger fact for me because one results won't be good because you're, mm. you're not doing a concentrated strategy. You're not giving yourself enough time. And mm. two, there's just no way communication can be on point if that's going on. And so that's always a red flag for me. I think establishing a communication framework really early on is key. Mm. And what I mean by that is actually mapping out not just who your main contact is at a client, mm. but who the, who else is involved in the team, how involved do they need to be? Because instantly from that document, you can tell us way how active a communications you need on this account. And I think that's really key. And I think the main point for me really is like, we've obviously just done this and for our side, it's absolutely the right move. I know owners will be listening saying, I just can't afford in this environment to do that. And I know, and I fundamentally do get that. We work a lot in the hospitality sector. We were ramroaded last year due to COVID with all our restaurants and hotels shutting down. I fundamentally get the stress of having to turn away revenue. And so I don't want people thinking going, oh, he just doesn't get it. Cause I, I truly do. And so it's a, it is a tough call. It really is, but it is, I'm not just saying this because verb has rebuilt strongly and we've, we're lucky enough to be able to turn away revenue. I'm not saying it because I'm saying that even if you're at your lowest point from business owner it's still worth doing because it fundamentally does change the way, the way your business um, operates ben how would people get hold of you if they wanted to reach out to you my email is always the best and that's kind of my to-do list it's ben cool. at verbrands.com and i guess they could always find you on linkedin as well yeah absolutely well thank you so much for your time ben and Thanks, yeah. we should definitely revisit this because as well, you are the first guest on this kind of series of LinkedIn Up. and I'm so happy that I reached out to you. We will definitely be in touch and thank you again for your time. It's great to meet you. Yeah. Chat soon. Talk to you soon, Ben. Take care.